What is a radian? You've just won a reality show and you're enjoying your victory on a beach all alone. And all you have is a tiny bit of rope left over from one of the contests. So you start doing some math with it and you say, do what comes naturally. You draw a circle in the sand and um, so you have this rope and you want to start measuring stuff. So what you could do is you could take this radius and fold the rope in half to get half the radius. You could double the rope to get twice the radius. And you can keep work, working the rope around until eventually you could sort of create a system that basically measures radius units. And because the rope bends, you've got a nice flexible ruler that you could wrap around the circle that you drew. So let's go back to that circle you drew in the sand, and we're going to use radius units to mark off distance along the perimeter of the circle. So you could take your rope, measure off one radius around the outside of the circle, say. And uh, the question we want to ask is, what is it have you really measured? What have you done when you take one radius unit along the edge of the circle? And something we haven't really addressed, what, what, uh, how does the radius actually affect this process? So you could have uh, a couple other finalists from the show who have ropes of different lengths. And the question is, what happens when they play the same game? So we're going to notice that you could take the different radii and build a circle from it, each one. And when all three contestants go to mark off one radius unit around the circle, you will notice that what happens is you get these shapes that look to be pretty much similar. And the thing you really notice here is that all three contestants have marked off the same angle. And that's really the key. The key observation is radius units measure angle. And radius units are really a terrible name for units, and so let's just shorten that up and we'll call them radians. So let's ask this question, how many radians constitute a circle? So you could count off these radius units, or radians, and you'll find that uh, six fill inside a circle, and then there's a little bit more smidgen, say six and a third, about 6.3 radians in a circle. But actually, that shouldn't come as a surprise. It's pretty ancient knowledge. In fact, we know, we've known for a long time, that the ratio of circumference to diameter is a number we call pi, about 3.14. And the diameter is twice the radius, so you expect the ratio of circumference to radius to be 2 pi, and 2 pi is about 6.2832. And there you go, the number of radians that fit in a full circle is going to be about 6.3, a little shy of 6.3. You're probably very used to measuring angles using degrees, so let's talk about the conversions to and from degrees. There are 360 degrees in a circle, and that has to be the same as the number of radians that fit in a circle, so that's 2 pi. So 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. So 360 divided by 2 pi, or 180 divided by pi, degrees per radian, that's the conversion factor we can use to go from radians to degrees. And if we take the reciprocal, we'll get the conversion factor that will enable us to go from degrees to radians. So for example, 18 degrees, if we multiply by pi over 180, we can do some unit analysis and we see that the um, degrees cancel, and 18 over 180 leaves 10 in the denominator, so 18 degrees winds up being the same as pi over 10 radians. But in fact, what you really want to do, instead of converting all the time, you'd really like to start speaking radians natively. That is, don't rely on translations back and forth from degrees. So there are pi radians in a half circle. Cut that in half, that's pi over 2 radians, makes a right angle. Cut that into thirds, and you can easily see that pi over 6 and pi over 3 are 30 and 60 degrees respectively. Pi over 2 cut in half, that should be 45 degrees. So these basic angles should be committed, if not to your memory, you should be able to reproduce it very quickly.
Are there other ways to measure radians? Do you keep needing to go back to that original radius rope that you use to draw your circle in the sand? So in fact, you can use any units you want. Suppose you had a tape measure that measured, in this case, say, inches. How would you use that tape measure to find the number of radians in an angle? Well, you could simply measure the radius first. So let's suppose you got about 1.8 inches for that measurement. You could take that tape measure and then measure around the arc subtended by the angle. And let's suppose your arc length was 4.24 inches. So just ask yourself how many radii fit inside of that arc. You would just take the quotient. So the angle measure would be 4.24 inches divided by 1.8 inches. That would tell you the number of radii that fit. That's about 2.36. And we'll point out that actually this is a unitless number. The inches canceled. It's a unitless quantity. We call them radians so that we know we're measuring angle. But in fact, it's a unitless quantity. There are no units attached to it. It turns out radians are a very natural unit to use if you want to talk about arc length. So suppose this angle is theta radians and the radius is r, and this arc length is s. The very definition of radians tells us that s divided by r is theta. This is exactly the content of the example we just looked at. Put another way, the arc length is equal to r times theta. Now remember, this only works if you're measuring theta in radians. Let's talk about area. Suppose we were interested in calculating the area of this wedge. We know the area of a full circle is pi r squared. And we know that the number of radians in a full circle is 2 pi. So the percentage of a full circle enclosed by the wedge should be the ratio of theta over 2 pi. And that means the area of the wedge would be the percentage of the circle multiplied by the area of the whole circle, which simplifies to 1 half r squared theta. So this gives you the formula for the area of a sector. Once again, it's critical to point out that theta must be measured in radians for this formula to work. So in summary, radians provide a very natural, unitless method for measuring angle. If an angle has radian measured theta, then theta is the number of radii that fit along the perimeter of the corresponding arc. And this quantity is independent of the radius. It works for any size circle. And finally, if you measure angle in radians, then the arc length and the area of the sector subtended by the angle are easily calculated. S, the arc length is r theta, and A, the area, is 1 half r squared theta.